Okay, so I'm back. Hopefully this will be the last section because my screen recorder only uh, the limit is 15 minutes. So moving on. Here I think I already explained. Yeah, I already explained this this paper thing. Um, I'm just holding the uh, the front portion of the husky's body together with some pens and rope here. All right, here we've got. Um, you can see in this previous picture, the dress is a circle. I want it to be an oval, so that way, because right now it looks like um, her waist would be right about here, and that makes her legs really, really short. Her legs should extend to about right here. So right now it looks like she just has really short legs. So I need to make this dress more of an oval shape. So instead of a circle, it should be an oval. So that's what I'm doing here. I've uh, sprayed it down with some water and stuck it between a couple uh, textbooks. And here I'm just holding down where her knees would be. There's a, another detail. I knew those old textbooks were going to be good for something. Okay. Here, I'm doing the same sort of thing with her shoulders. I just unfolded it a little bit, sprayed it with water, and put a clothespin on. I already did this shoulder. All right, and that's about it. There's the finished product. So I wanted there to be a little bit more, um, how do I say it, emotion, I suppose, in this rather than just a girl and just a dog. I, I figured it'd be better if. Uh, you know, they were holding hands, or, you know, the paw was in her hand. I wanted to do the other hand as well, but, or I, I thought about it, but then I decided, no, I, I don't want it to look too symmetrical. Asymmetry is often better than perfect symmetry. And this is an old t-shirt, because I don't have a backdrop. Or not, not an official backdrop. Okay. Another side view. The uh, the way I curled the hair here is I just flattened it out as much as I could and then took a pencil and used it pretty much like a curling iron. So just wrap the paper around the pencil and then roll the pencil a little bit. And that's how you get these, these nice waves in the hair. Like this. Okay. Then the rest of these, I think, are just different views. So I'll let you enjoy them. Here's the, uh, the detail of the hair again. You can see in here all the transition creases. Uh, that's a lot of paper to fold through. It's about 128 layers once you stack it all together. And we're back to the very beginning. Now, I will do, in one of my next tutorials, I'm going to do a tutorial or a, a section on how to do this because that crease doesn't actually end here. Uh, this crease doesn't actually end here either, but it is kind of odd how this actually works out, and I don't have a good way of explaining it with words. I will also explain how to make those creases in the hair as well once I get there. Whoa. Okay, these. I'll also do an explanation on how to make those. Alright, if you have any questions on a particular section of this or maybe how, how it was designed, uh, leave a comment or send me a message and I will reply as best as I can, either in words or in video. 
So, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope hope you're able to uh, to learn something from this. Uh, for those of you who are new to box pleading, this is not a good one to start out with. Uh, I would recommend going to probably Jason Koo's website because he has a lot of crease patterns and some of them are fairly simple uh, box plated models and Brian Chan also has some really great crease patterns ranging from pretty simple to unbelievably complicated uh, more complicated than this so I will finish off with that and once again if you have any questions just leave me a comment or shoot me any uh, a personal message excuse me personal message and we'll talk about it so have a good one Tom Phoenix out